My name's Clint, and I crave wood. I mean, carve wood. I carve wood. And today, I will be carving and painting Link's Highland Shield and Sword from Twilight Princess. Here's the process. Now, what you need here is an anti-gap device. Look in your nearest pile of stuff or a treasure chest to find one. Once you've found it, make sure to put it in place, cue some happy music, and give those wedges a little bit of a tappy tappy tap tap tap. You now have a pencil shelf. Congratulations. Make sure to verbally encourage your template to line up properly. Come on. There we go. I prefer this printout and carbon paper method over the sticking stuff to the surface method, as I can use the template repeatedly throughout the whole process. But, you know, different pencil strokes for different folks and all that business. If you're an expert like me, then you know exactly how to secure a carving just so it has enough bounce in it to annoy you, but not really affect your work too much. Bounce, 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 bounce. There we go. Get out of there. Okay, so we'll move away from prehistoric wedges, which idiot decided to use those, and move on to the future of securing things which is screws. If you're a streamer, you can make it so the viewers can tell you to eat things. I chose Jaffa Cakes because every other food is inferior. You'll find a V-chisel in pretty much every chisel carver's collection, and for a good reason. They're excellent for creating the first boundary lines in carvings and for cleaning out tough to reach corners. In this case, we're using it to create those boundary lines, which are basically the same as stop cuts, preventing the wood splitting off beyond a certain point. I do absolutely love the little facets created of this method of chisel carving. You might be thinking, Clint, how tall would Link be if he was the same scale as the sword and shield you're making? That is an excellent question, valued viewer. Let's find out. So the shield I'd made here is about 15 centimeters tall. Now we need to find out how tall Link is in Twilight Princess. Okay, so let's say 5 foot 8, which is about 173 centimetres. So he's 173 centimetres tall, making the shield about 65 centimetres tall. 173 divided by 65 equals 2.7-ish. 15 times 2.7-ish equals 41-ish. Meaning that using this shield and sword, Link would be 41 centimetres tall, which is 1 foot and 4 inches. Or if you're a more discerning and sophisticated person like myself, he'd be around 7.7 .7 Jaffa Cakes tall. According to Zelda.fandom.com, the Hylian Shield will not burn upon contact with fire. And though it is made of steel, it is light and sturdy, an optimal weight for a fighter with a one-handed weapon. Throughout the Zelda games, the Hylian Shield has changed little in terms of overall appearance, always bearing the symbol of the Triforce, and beneath it a red Hylian crest representing the goddess Hylia, and the Crimson Loftwing that helped Link at the founding of Hyrule. The first Hylian Shield was a legendary shield guarded by the Thunder Dragon Lanaryu, who created the Lightning Round to judge whether someone would be worthy of wielding the shield. Sharpening break. We're carving this shield from lime wood, but we're painting it to look like metal, so I'm throwing out some mixed signals here. I find it keeps my enemies on their toes. Wait! We need a scraper. Check your nearest drawer of tools for satisfaction. This bit can be a bit tricky, but just imagine you're flipping over a chocobo omelette. The Master Sword was originally crafted by the Goddess Hylia as the Goddess Sword. 
and was later forged into the Master Sword by the goddess's chosen hero and its spirit, Fi, who bathed it in the three sacred flames located across the land that would become the Kingdom of Hyrule. Din's flame in particular imbued the sword with the power to repel evil, a power augmented after the sword received the blessing of Zelda, which transformed the blade into the true Master Sword. You may be wondering what vice I'm using here, and I have done a review of it before, but here it is. I'd like to point out that I'm not sponsored by Stanley, I just really like the vice. Though if a Stanley person wants to pay me the big bucks, then I'm all ears. It's a Stanley 183069, and as you can see with the demonstration by my glamorous assistant, it can bend and turn in many different ways. It basically operates with three different screw clamps. One fixes the vice to your desk or bench, one holds the tilting angle in position, and the final screw works as the grips to hold your workpiece in place. The main setback of gluing your carving down is the cleanup. I'm going to say something you are probably sick of hearing, but I'm going to say it anyway. My video uploads these days are further apart, but I've never put more effort into a video than this one you're watching right now. For that reason, I'm starting a Patreon. Should you decide to support, your name will be featured in my future videos and I'll have a chip carving template for patrons every month, as well as the usual behind the scenes stuff. I can't promise videos every week, but I can promise you that I will do my best to bring entertaining and informative content. I want to say thanks to Boyle Hobby Time, among others, for giving me this acrylic wash idea. Uh, it's really added an extra layer to the final piece. Literally. Here come the glamour shots. Thank you so much for watching, uh, I hope you enjoyed it and that you have a fantastic day.